good? Well, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Before I address non-football related matters, I'd like to congratulate the Washington State Cougars and their victory in the Apple Cup. It was an honor to uh, present the Apple Cup to uh, new coach Jake Dickert. And I think all of us were rightfully inspired by the Cougar football team that overcame a lot of uh, adversity during their season and had a great uh, Apple Cup. We want to look forward to Kayla and DeBoer's uh, tenure at the University of Washington, and we can't wait for the next Apple Cup. Now to uh, non-football related matters, we're going to talk about our flooding that we've experienced most recently. This has been a severe event. We know hundreds of homes were severely damaged. We had one loss of life. And I just want to show my respect for the community and all the leaders who pulled together to help their community through this difficult time. We had great leadership from two mayors of uh, Sumas and Everson. Here's uh, Perry and Christensen. We had the National Guard on duty, which we appreciate. We had the Sheriff's and Fire Department doing a great job. We had Fast Water Rescue that did some great rescues. And we want to thank the hundreds of local volunteers who pitched in both to do rescues and to help people with cleanup. It's been a very difficult time for this community. We're going to do everything we can to help them through this, both repair and rebuilding. We are actively uh, looking at the damage to, uh, uh, to come up with a sum total to present to the federal government to see if we could obtain federal assistance. We now have a cash uh, van in, uh, to help with some cash assistance. And we're making some progress on some housing options that we'll have more to say about uh, in the coming days. So work is continuing on this. And again, I want to uh, really commend the community for the, for the community spirit they showed in so many different ways. Uh, the Lummi and Macaw tribes are also affected. And you know, uh, I was thinking about the Lummi tribe. They could not get food or fuel for some period of time because they were cut off by the floods as were the macaws. And uh, at the same time, the Lummies have lost a lot of their Dungeness crab industry because of the invasion of a foreign species, uh, the green crab, that outcompeted the Dungeness, in part because of warming waters, because of climate change. And I think what we saw during the last couple of weeks is the, the really disastrous face of climate change, which is sweeping across our country, our, our state, yet again. And it is so painful to me to see and visit, as I did, one of the homes where the Nooksack River went right through the picture window, and know that those, those folks and more people will be victimized by climate change in the upcoming years. So we're going to have to do everything we can to protect this and other communities in the future. We're going to do what we can to become more resilient. We're going to have to build up our roads. We're going to have to uh, build up our communication systems. But ultimately, we have to fight climate change at its source. You can't just build up the entire towns of Northwest Washington to avoid floods. We have to defeat climate change at its source, or we will continue to be overswept by floods and fire and invasive species uh, destroying our, our seafood industry. So I will be presenting some proposals. I hope the legislature will act on them to continue our leadership in the state of Washington against climate change by building a clean energy economy. And I hope we will get more done in that regard. We also had a loss of our Chinook. Uh, the Chinook uh, 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 were damaged because of the floods in the Nooksack River. And we know how Chinook are critical to our orca. This was yet another loss to all of us because as the salmon go and the orca go, so go we. So I hope this can serve as an inspiration to our state legislators to take more action against this scourge that we're facing in the state of Washington. Uh, Omicron, there is much we don't know yet about Omicron. Uh, we know that we will have more information in the upcoming weeks. But the one thing we know about Omicron and this is a certainty, it makes sense to get vaccinated today, no matter what we find out about Omicron. Because right today, we're threatened by Delta. It would be really sad if people lose their lives today because they've been killed by the Delta variant. 
while they're worrying about Omicron. Delta's killing people today. And we really urge people to get their first vaccine and their booster at the appropriate time. And now everyone over the age 18 is eligible for a booster at the appropriate time. That's the take home message about Omicron or Omicron. We do believe we have adequate sequencing ability to determine its presence. It's inevitable it will be in Washington State. It has not yet been detected. We have one of the best uh, sequencing and surveillance systems. We're like sixth in the nation as far as the percentage of our cases that are, that are sequenced. And as you know, we have a way of doing that fairly rapidly uh, because of the missing S component of uh, Omicron. So we will be active no matter what the science tells us. But the way to be active against this new variant is to be active against the old variant that is today killing people in the state of Washington. So we would encourage people to continue this effort. The best holiday gift you can give this holiday season, if you have that tradition, is to get a loved one get vaccinated and to be common sense on how we use masks, which we know continue to be very, very effective. Again, we want to thank the people in our medical professions who've now been at this for two years. They're still at it. Let's help them out uh, as well. We have had good success recently. The booster shots are increasing significantly. Uh, we've had something like a 75% increase in the last few days of people checking out our vaccine locator. And we've got an additional, I think it's 30,000 doses in our quota from the federal government. And will that increase up to over 80,000 additional doses, we hope, in the upcoming couple of weeks. So people, in part because of the uh, Omicron news probably, are increasing their acceptance and usage of the booster. We think that's really good news. Uh, there may be, may take a little work because of the amazing demand for the booster right now. Keep at it. Hours don't count, but weeks do when it comes to booster shots. So let's make sure we continue to utilize this life-saving vaccine. Uh, we want to thank the Biden administration beginning December 15th of FEMA in partnership with our Department of Health and also Public Health in Seattle and King County. We'll operate a family med uh, vaccine unit to provide adult boosters and vaccines for kids. This is an all-family affair. And it's going to help get to some of our communities that have not had as much access as we would have liked. This adds to what has been an extraordinary effort to get vaccines out to people. Uh, we have supported at least 327 mobile clinics uh, just since June. So this is uh, continuing to add to our efforts to get vaccine to where people are. And we know there's considerable demand, as I indicated. It's going to increase our equity as well. Again, I want to thank the Biden administration for being uh, alert to helping out Washington State. We really appreciate his leadership. Um, budget. We will roll out our budget uh, the week of December 13th. It's a short session, but we have tremendous opportunity to, good, to do good things in the state of Washington this year, in part because of our fiscal situation and in part because of recognition of the need for action. And we'll be taking action big time this year, even though it's a short session. Uh, the legislature has been working on a transportation budget for several months, but they have not reached any deals in this regard. Uh, so my office will continue to focus on immediate needs, such as electric vehicles, transit, ferries, and matching funds for high-speed rail. And also importantly, the preservation and rehabilitation of our existing transportation network and that will be reflected in my budget. Now, on the national stage, we see people's rights to the right of choice under attack in Washington, D.C. It is under serious attack. We don't know the exact result, but we see the, the foreboding signs that people's right to choice in the state of Washington will yet again be under attack in our fair state. So I can say that if you care about this right, and I certainly do, we are going to have to work to protect this right in the state of Washington, I believe. Otherwise, it will be lost. 
no one should think Washington State is somehow safe because of our pre-existing success in the state of Washington, leading the country when it comes to the right of choice. Our state is likely to be under assault yet again by political forces in our state who seek to roll back the clock to the dark days before the right of choice was protected in the state of Washington and nationally by the Roe decision. So I am blowing the alarm in our state about this so that people can become active now in the face of this onslaught. We cannot be passive. We have to be active in our state. And I'm asking people to join me because I will stand up as long as I am governor to protect the right of choice. And it is time to understand that is going to be under threat in our state. So good news. Uh, we have a Washingtonian, Kayla uh, Barron from the Tri-Cities, who uh, just finished a successful spacewalk to replace a broken antenna on the International Space Station. It's her first spacewalk. She'll be up there for a few more months. And uh, she has yet again made Washington State proud about the adventuresome spirit and the scientific uh, traditions of the state of Washington. Thanks for her leadership. We have Dr. Shaw, Lacey Fernback, and Nick Struley also with me today.